He doesn't seem too intimidated. <laughs> He's you can see in his eyes something change a little bit when you mention that name, but uh, he if 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 anything else your bravado and yelling at him strengthens his resolve. Okay, I drop my pike and with my other hand I start uh well, Alex, Alex's camera's going crazy. He, uh, hit, he put s- something up in front of it because he's doing secret things. <laughs> I start uh, crushing uh, his wound. Wherever that oh, is. Oh, like you grab one of his ankles and kind of start, you know, yeah, crushing well, where he'd been. It was a, his Achilles heel, right? Yeah, both of his Isn't tendons. That on the back of the thigh? No, no, the back of his heel. Oh, like that's the back right. of his. Okay the back that that big tendon back there that's what got kind of cut in half and so that's kind of that's kind of awkward so i'm just gonna yank his hair back (laughs) (laughs) okay he's he he screams out in pain and uh i guess make another intimidation check okay here you are, then pipe up again. One minute, 45 seconds. I, I made the check. Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, he, as you're, as you're kind of gripping his hair, he says... If you know the if you know that name, you know she will do far worse to me than you ever could. And he sticks his tongue out as far as he can, and bites it off. And kind of just blood begins pouring out of his mouth. And he kind of still screaming is like gurgling blood bubbles as he laughs. Well, I've never seen that happen, but I'm pretty sure that's going to step the time frame probably by about 15 seconds, I'd say. Yeah, he's, he's right. bleeding pretty bad. You know, I mean, you, Gore, you know that he's, you know what he's doing. <laughs> okay, so seeing that he cut out his tongue and can no longer talk, I throw him down onto the ground hard and then pull out the dagger that I got from the clearing earlier and stick it into his throat. Okay, you still have him grappled, so make an attack with advantage, I'm pretty sure. I'm just going to say it's advantage, because he's... Just, he... Yeah, you, you stick him completely cleanly through, and since he was already bleeding out and at zero hit points, he dies. He kind of gurgles blood to the last, still laughing with the wild look in his eyes. Okay. And As he slumps I, limp in your arms. I immediately start searching the body to see if he has anything that would reveal more information to me. Okay. Make a uh, investigation check. Okay. You don't find anything of particular value on him, but you do find very small... Uh, kind of burned into his flesh over his heart five small uh, dots kind of laid out in a vertical um, half circle like there's one dot at the top and then two and then two and apart from that he has no no possessions or anything on him he does have a club that he was carrying and just kind of a tattered robe So everyone's dead. Julian is off over here kind of pouting because Gore stole her plaything. Okay, so I kick away the body in disgust and I'm going to start, like, walking down the road again. Okay. Does and anybody else... Pilot. Go ahead. Does anybody else see the tattoo or just Gore? Just Gore. I'm going to pipe up and say... All right, well, I really think instead of killing all of these guys, um, we should probably stick to the shadows. You know, nobody ever listens to me. Julian yells at Yalara, grab the kids, let's go. 
I was waiting for somebody to remember that there was a family. Okay, so <clears throat> I'll safely yeah, assume that you all kind of regroup, um, and the, the the you have the the family back with you, uh, but you're still kind of in this same spot. Well, Gore said he started walking down the road, but Warland yelled after him. You know, maybe we shouldn't try and fight our way through. Um, what's everybody doing? What's the consensus of how to kind of approach and uh, keep going forward? As we all group up, I say, I can go in front of us and make sure the roads are clear, and then you guys can follow in my foot pants, footprints. They're not the very foot, big, but I'm sure you foot can Foot pants? Them. Yeah, foot so pants. So socks? Yeah. Aren't, aren't <laughs> socks basically foot, foot pants? Uh-huh. If feet are leg hands, then socks are foot pants. <laughs> yeah, they're definitely foot pants. You have a problem with my foot pants? No, there's kind of an inside joke about that. But. <clears throat> All right, I wish so, I was privy to your inside foot pants joke. <laughs> well, it's you the know, joke. The joke is that love story time. You can always sit around the campfire. I love story time. No, the joke is that that feet are like. One time, somebody said to me, "You know, feet—they're really just leg hands." <laughs> like in all seriousness. And so you saying foot pants reminded me of that. Uh, gauging by how much Allison is laughing here, I'm assuming it was her. It was not her, I but wish. it was. It was. I, I told her okay. about it early in our dating life, and she laughed very hysterically and we made fun of that person a lot okay <laughs> Andrew's going to want to push on to, to the key to get this family at the very least out of our care into somebody else's care so that we can continue on doing whatever it is we need to do yeah it sounds like you're all trying to get to the key let's get going but uh, Warland suggesting going out in front and trying to scout I think yeah, like I, uh, like I'm suggesting, like I can go out in front and you know weave us through this town so we don't have any more encounters, and you guys just kind of follow along in my path. We kind of could have just avoided that one, to be honest. They didn't look a whole lot different than us. We just stepped on it. We could get there pretty quickly. Mm hmm. All right, so you, you everyone starts moving forward kind of through the f- fog and the smoke. Um, Whirlin, are you going to try and run ahead of them, or are you going to stick with the group? Uh, yeah, I'm going to try to run ahead of them Okay. and stay in the shadows Okay. You know, use my ninja moves. Make a uh, stealth check. Okay. You, uh, you, you, you creep through the shadows, but kind of as you're rounding a corner and looking one way, you, uh, you kind of come out into a place where the fog is somewhat more clear, and you look kind of down the street, and you can't tell if they see you or not, but you see two kobolds with their uh, kind of massive lizard-looking thing in between them, uh, almost like an alligator, but more dragon-y looking. Uh, and they're both holding onto him with one uh, large rope each. And he's just kind of sniffing his way down the, the path. As there are other kobolds and, and similar people to, to who you've already seen kind of running around in the background and chasing various uh, villagers in and out of houses. Um, but as far as you know, they kind of look at you, but... They don't seem t- particularly bothered by you. I uh, I just stay there and keep my eyes on them. And then when the rest of the group catches up, you know, I kind of whirl and turns back to them and gives them the uh, kind of okay. look. <laughs> so, <clears throat> so as you're doing that, you kind of turn back in this large lizard creature and... Um, the kobolds kind of walk past your position and one of them looks at you and clearly can seize you and just says get back to work gnome and they kind of 
continue on down the road and out of sight. Orlin turns to the group and throws his hands up and goes, don't they know we're not very good at manual labor? <laughs> Apparently they don't care if we walk the streets and he just turns around and flicks his, uh, his uh, trench coat, i.e. shirt, and starts walking towards the keep. All right. What do the rest of you do? Andrew will follow. Julian okay. keeps pace okay. with Warlin. Okay. I follow, but I'm still looking out for any more uh, robed figures. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so are you all just, are you trying to stay in the shadows and hide? Or are you just walking down the middle of the street like you belong there? What's how, what's the approach? I'm going to walk, like? like, proudly as if I belong there. Okay. Just... I mean, it doesn't seem like anybody's really surprised to see us or okay yeah. to attack. Warland's, so. uh, Warland's casually walking down the road, but his casual walking down the road is like scurrying between, you know, bushes or, I mean, just his general nature is to be sneaky. Sure. Um... All right, so I would like everybody to make uh, a deception check. Sorry, a perception check. Deception. Mm. I think, and that isn't that what it's still called. All right. Well then. All right. Well, since that was a, a group check and over half of you made it, uh, you do see as you're walking down the uh, down the um, down that kind of main thoroughfare towards the keep. Um, just more kobolds, more um, people that are just similar to what you've seen raiding houses. You hear various screams and various um, sounds of disturbances coming from different houses. Um, I'd just like to make a note, this is really bothering Ander. Orlin peeps back and says, you know, I'm starting to get this uneasy feeling that the keep might not be the safest place in town anymore. Just saying. I could have told you that. You notice, uh, you do notice that there are a lot, there, there are almost no purple arm banded guys. There are a lot more just regular looking people and a ton of kobolds. Hmm. But through the uh, through the the mists and the fog of, uh, of the burning town of Greenest you see Greenest Keep kind of towering in front of you and as you draw near to it, it seems somewhat odd. There are not it, there are various kind of random groups of uh, of kobolds and uh, and we'll just call them bandits uh, around in the in the houses and running up and down the streets, but you don't see too many surrounding the keep yet. There are one or two that seem like they are just kind of standing around waiting uh, in front of the keep and kind of pacing back and forth, but uh, they're they're kind of far off and they just seem to be kind of standing around waiting um, and so you really don't have much trouble approaching the keep as you draw within probably 50 feet of it Kuth uh, Swift runs up to the gate there's kind of a portcullis large iron kind of gridded gate uh, covering the large door um, there are two smaller doors on either side that are look very heavily fortified and uh, oak doors but the big portcullis is a, is a large, probably 20 foot tall uh, gate. And he runs up and starts talking to the, uh, the, the, the person that's manning the, the gate. And the portcullis raises about six feet and he motions you all to come inside. <clears throat> what do you do? Hmm. 
Was he what's the, what, what was the person that looks like at the gate? Was he a human? You can't see him yet. <clears throat> you saw Cuth run up and start talking, and there's a figure. It looks humanoid. Uh, it's human size. Does um, Cuth like this person? Yeah, he's talking to <laughs> he's talking to him. From everything that you can see, it looks like he ran up to the gate, yelled through the gate, and then the gate raised, and then he motioned you to come through the gate. Well, then I hustle fucking in. All right. Let's get going, guys. They got to close this <sighs> gate behind us. But do we want to get stuck in there? I thought we were just dropping them off. You guys want to get stuck out here? Mm. Warlin I... looks around and he goes, huh, starts scurrying off towards the gate. Okay, so as you all you all kind of get closer to the gate, even if you haven't gone in yet, you can see that the the guy that Kuth is talking to inside on the other side of the port cost is dressed is a human and is dressed just like the guard that you saw get killed um, mm. at the front uh, when you first entered town. Mm. So Warlin and Julian go scurrying through the gate. The rest of you. I'm going to go in, too. Okay. Oh, Anders going in. Okay. All right, I'll go. Okay. So you all enter the gate, and he, uh, Kuth kind of ushers his family in, and they kind of still stick close to you, uh, right as the portcullis is coming down, and they kind of turn around to see if any, if, if there's going to be any breach from the few, uh, from the few kind of kobolds that are around, uh, but it doesn't seem like they're paying too much attention right now. And the guardsman who has lifted the gate uh, approaches whoever went through the the gate first, I think Julian, and exasperated says, you, have you seen a a woman with two children? They all have bright red hair, and you can see that this man poking out kind of under his... Helmet has just bright red, kind of curly locks well, coming we down. we got some children, and all about the hair. He said, no, no, that's the Swift family. I know them. I'm looking for my sister and her two kids. It's too late, she's sorry. A, she's a... Uh, unprepared. Um, she is a... She's a priestess at the temple of Chantea. Did you all pass the temple of the temple on your way in? I don't believe so. Which again, temple I've is it? I've never been to this town. There's only one temple in Greenest. It's the temple of Chantea. Chantea. She's a, she's a priestess there. Chantea. And so he seems exasperated. And as soon as you say that you haven't seen that person he goes up to each kind of member of the party and is like, have you, you, have any of you, uh, just the brightest red hair you've ever seen, two little children, probably seven or eight years old, and a woman, uh, a, a large woman. Uh, have you seen anyone fitting that description? <sighs> no, I am afraid not. Oh, I continue to pray Sorry, for bud. their self for their The only safety. thing on the streets are these little creatures that run around. Not like me. They're a little bit taller, but they got scaly skin and they go. <laughs> no fat yes. kids with curly hair. Sorry. The kobolds. The kobolds have have been raiding, and I'm, that's why I'm concerned for their safety. And he kind of wanders off into the into the rest of the courtyard. As he's wandering off, Orlan pips up. If he's so concerned, what's he doing in here? <laughs> So, so Kuth says, all right, well, we need to see the state of things, and I'm, I'm going to go talk to Night Hill. Uh, I suggest that you all come and do the same and, and, and receive any aid that you might need uh, that, that he can offer in the, in the keep. He is, even though I disagree with him about the security measures he's taken in Greenest, he is, he is kind-hearted, and he kind of walks and uh, motions you all to follow him up into the keep uh, tower. All right. Well, once I get into the keep, I look around for any high points, like on the walls, where I can get up. Uh, yeah, you see that there, there are there are no high points on the wall. The wall is one, 
level uh, at the top there are no ramparts or anything really to speak of it's just kind of a solid wall all the way around a, uh, a, a large courtyard with the keep kind of towards the back uh, and you can see it's kind of stone faced but the, the, the tower of the keep rises probably 50 feet and the, the wall is probably 20-25 feet tall but it's, it's, okay. it's just one solid thing is that where Kuth is leading us towards that tower? Yes, there's one. There's okay. a there's a, there's a small stairway of about four stairs leading up into the tower. Everything is stone. You can see up at the top uh, of the wall there are guards posted, similarly dressed to the uh, the man that just asked you about his sister. Um, but it looks like there are very few guards. There are maybe twenty. Um, around the, the edge of the wall. And, yeah, there's a stone doorway at the top of the stairway leading into the keep, and Kuth and his family walk in. And, uh... If no one want If... if Does anyone want to do anything in the courtyard? I just want to get just up gonna, to the top of the tower. I'm okay. just going to simple say a simple prayer to Bahamut asking for justice uh, to be dispensed on those who attack this town. Okay. As uh, Warland's walking by, uh, he fumbles through his uh, his necklaces and finds the Bahamut symbol and reaches up and kisses it as walks by and says, this always brings you luck, right? And continues following Gore to the top of the tower. Awesome. All right. Julian well, you all... finds the kitchen and makes a snack. <laughs> Okay, so you all make your way in and follow Kuth up one flight of stairs up uh, up into the tower, and the room opens up and you see kind of a, a slender man dressed in blue. He looks to be about 60, and his head is bandaged and his right arm is in a sling. And uh, he turns around and says, Kuth and your family, where did you make it all the way through town? With with this with this uh, raid that's that's going on, what do you make of it? What 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 is this raid? What's happening to us? And Kuth just you know kind of goes over and whispers some stuff into Night Hill's ear, and then you hear Night Hill or he sorry Kuth introduces you. Says this is Governor Night Hill. Uh, Night Hill. These people are the people that brought me and my family safely through town. And Night Hill says, "Yes, yes, you, you all, uh, you, your, your family looks, looks, looks wounded. Please, please go into the, go into, into the, uh, the guest chambers, uh, and Kuth and his family kind of wander off. And Night Hill comes up to you all and says, "Is it true that just you five made it through the town with this family, and 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 brought them here safely?" Yes. Yes, it no is. No problem. What is what is happening here? I mean, obviously you're under attack, but what what's the situation? Oh, I don't know. I, we were just we were just attacked. These these kobolds started pouring over the hill and into the town, and then this great blue dragon began swooping down and breathing some sort of god awful I don't know I don't know what he just uh the dragon is really he comes and goes but I don't know if we can withstand another another attack from the dragon we haven't seen him mm. in probably over Whoa, an hour at this point comes and goes mm. yeah he seems to he seems to just come by every I don't know at random times and he attacks the keep and I've lost over half of my guards up on the top of this tower trying to defend uh, from the dragon to take it to take it down or make it lose interest in attacking us but it, it seems to fly off and come back and I, I, I just I don't know there are these <sighs> here's what we know there are several there are several types of people that seem to be involved in this raid but we don't know what they want or what they're doing they seem to be just taking Valuables from the few villagers that have actually made it here. The town is still full of my people. 
and they're, they're holed up in their houses, and I know that there's, a, from the top of the tower, you can see the Temple of Chantea, that there's at probably at least 20 of our, our uh, town holed up in there. And if, if you all are brave enough and strong enough to get this family through the town uh, safely to the keep, this keep is defensible and has not been breached. Uh, I would ask that you would go and see if you can rescue any more innocents uh, from this from this raid, hopefully before the dragon comes back. And as he says that, you hear this voice from the from a, cha- a doorway leading out into kind of a dark chamber off to the side. It says, Well, why do you think we can trust this lot? They look just like all the other bastards running around in town. And you see this short, stocky, bright red-haired dwarf with his beard just completely poofed out like the tangliest, grossest beard you've ever seen walk out from the doorway and say, I think this is a trek and they're just trying to they're just trying to infiltrate and learn what we know. I wouldn't trust them as far as I can spit. And that is where we will end tonight's episode. <laughs>